Hello everyone, this is Mike from Dimensional Walking. And today I want to talk about a guy named Steve Fawcett. Um, he was a record-setting aviator. He was a sailor. He was an adventurer. And um, so one day, uh, a while back, I was scrolling down a good friend of mine's uh, website called Debris Field. It's quite a famous one. She lives in Albuquerque. And I was looking at a, um, an article about Steve Fawcett, and uh, and it was kind of a you know tongue-in-cheek type ar article. Uh, was talking about you know because at the time they hadn't found him, found him or his body, or they, nobody knew where he was, and it was a big mystery. And it was kind of a, the, comparing it to Bigfoot, Elvis. Uh, 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 what was Amelia Earhart, um, and uh, apparently the story goes that even investigators from the uh, Lloyds of London, uh, who were doing an investigation on it, uh, actually were very puzzled too, and those investigators are pretty good, because apparently in this particular case there had to be some, some insurance policy or, or something uh, involved in this. Um, so anyways, uh, and there was other officials, uh, and I read this in separate articles uh, from the uh, uh, research groups that were not only research, but search and rescue groups that were trying to find him. And they were also extremely puzzled uh, why they couldn't find him, even though, don't get me wrong, it was in a pretty rugged mountainous area. But still there was, uh, you know, there were signals that were, uh, and, and they didn't talk about it much that those plane, that particular plane, I believe had a, um, I can't remember the exact term, but a, a, a way in which it signals a, a pulse signal, uh, of, uh, you know, like a uh, GPS type signal. So anyways, bottom line was for the longest time he was missing. I think it actually was 13 months. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little history if for you folks out there that have not heard about this whole event. So on September 3rd, uh, 2007, uh, Steve took, uh, took off in his small engine, single engine plane flying south out of Hilton Ranch, uh, and he was never seen again. Um, so late in October, I, I called, this is of the same year, I called a psychic friend of mine. And this psychic friend of mine had a, a pretty amazing ability to use dowsing to find people, okay? And he's quite famous for it, and I'm not gonna tell you his name, because I, I think he wants to stay fairly silent. Um, so, anyway, so he, he, I asked him if he would douse a map for me, and I gave him some of the specifics or some of the things I knew about uh, this particular incident. And uh, so, he took his. He went ahead and did this dowsing, uh, and I, I. First of all, I first of all, of course, ask him: Is this possible? Could you could you douse this type of situation? He said, "Sure, he'll he'll try to douse anything." And it isn't that, it isn't that he's a hundred percent successful, but he's had documented successes, and and I can tell you another one, uh, uh, several from he did for me besides this particular one. That were I would consider quite successful, but but bottom line is, uh, I went ahead and used his services, and, and it was pretty interesting. Uh, so, anyways, uh, my friend took a map, he doused it with his pendulum dowser, and it was like it's like a crystal uh, pendulum, and he he did a an area about 250 miles. Uh, from where Steve Fawcett uh, took off. And uh, so he spent about, I was with him, and I had to leave the room, which is a, a, the typical procedure we do. But he was like in this deep kind of trance for about 30 minutes. And then he, he passed, he passed uh, the map uh, off to me. And um, so he found, he did find a location. Okay, he did find a location of the plane, but he was not sure 100 percent if Steve was still with the plane, or you know he had crashed and he had vanished or, or died, etc. 
So don't forget two months, uh, September, October. Actually, yeah, about two months passed since since he disappeared. So anyway, so he didn't know if he was living or dead at this point. He, he really couldn't tell that, but he did feel that he knew the location. So so it was lo the location was close to a place called uh, Lake Alpine, California, in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Um, neither neither one of us had the resources or the time to go and explore this particular location. Um, so we went ahead. I went ahead and I called uh, several uh, uh, official agencies. Uh, uh, I think the sheriff's department of the county that that particular location was uh, a couple uh, search and rescue uh, uh, organizations in the area that were actually part of the search and so we uh, we at least went ahead I at least went ahead and and made contact with them but I'll be perfectly honest with you I don't know if they believe me or not I'm sure there was all kinds of other people that were calling with their take and their psychic abilities etc so it, there was probably who knows maybe a hundred or so of those people so um, anyway so that, that was that's as far as we could really take it so so the night the interesting thing that's kept on going so the night that I had read that particular article um, and that was the article that my, my friend had written for her her blog um, I had a really strange kind of a lucid very vivid dream about Steve uh, entering a vast vortex in the sky. Now I said, I know that sounds crazy, but that's what the the dream was. It was a very vivid dream, um, and there was something inside this vortex, something alive and moving. But I do not, I do not know what it was. It was alive and it was moving, and it was in this vast vortex. Um, so the next day, I called my friend the guy that uh, uh, doused the map for me uh, to find the location. And it was really interesting because, uh, you know, we surprised each other because he was sending me, he was sending me about, about an article that he had found about Steve Fawcett. Uh, he had found that uh, Steve had mentioned uh, to some friends one time that he had found a fourth dimensional place. Uh, a place somewhere that he was talking about. Uh, he didn't say exactly where it was, but he said he had found this, what he called the fourth dimension. And he, he said it was a secret gateway, and he said it was in the Nevada desert, okay? And, and my friend also said that there was a phone conversation uh, about a week before his disappearance, and he, he was, t uh, Steve Fawcett was telling him that this, he had witnessed again this dimension of this other place where there was no need for money or war and it was uh, inhabited by bluish blue aliens, bluish alien beings. Okay? Now, as you probably know if you follow our channel, I've done several videos. Uh, that I mentioned, they, they weren't 100% about the, the blue, the blue beings as I call them, um, but I do have, they do come up uh, now and then, and they're they're an interesting group. There's no doubt about it; they really are. So for him to say that, to bring up about these blue beings, which just kind of blew my mind away at that time. Um, next, uh, there was a there was a story uh, of, about Steve uh, Steve Fawcett's wife. Uh, so she said she had uh, gotten some type of a vision also from her husband uh, telling her to stop looking for him or the plane, okay? Because uh, no one will find it. He said that no one would find it. Steve said to her, he was fine, be patient, he loved her, and he would explain everything to the world in due time. And that he had vanished back to every, wherever. He, wait a minute, I'm sorry. And then he vanished back to when, wherever, okay? Um, I'm not really sure what that means. I'm taking a, some notes I have, and I, I'm, I'm puzzled myself right now what that exactly means. Anyways, 
The last part of this fascinating story is when I went back to my friend and asked him to douse for the vortex and took a Mac and a crystal. And the psychic, and, and I know the flight plan that Steve was supposed to have taken, but the psychic was on the money. After I checked out the flight plan uh, via the web, my friend, a vortex location directly in the flight plan in the small valley near uh, X, uh, X Xavier Mountains in Nevada. I always, always pay attention to synchronicity. Maybe Steve is like a Bigfoot now, a multi-dimensional being. Of course, I believe that Bigfoot are multi-dimensional beings, which in itself is a big controversy. Um, anyways, a side note to all this, okay? Did Steve find this fourth dimension? I don't know, but there's some really interesting uh, little conversations uh, in this path of his uh, mysterious journey. Now, just as a side note, 13 months later, they did find uh, some bone fragments. I think they found parts of the plane, and they did find some bone flip fragments um, in the desert, uh, out in this mountainous area, uh, this kind of very arid area. Uh, that's why I call it a desert. Um, and what was interesting, it was very, very close to where my friend had pinpoint using dowsing that where we thought, where he thought that the plane had gone down. So, and again, remember, he never said there was a body there. He just said, that's the, where the plane is. He said, I don't know where the body is. I just don't know. So anyways, with that said, that's, that's pretty mysterious. And I always thought that was a fascinating story. Uh, I, uh, I had written about the, uh, Steve Fawcett, uh, several times in the past on dimensional on our, uh, uh, true seeker forum, um, website, uh, back in the, the late uh, 2000s. So anyways, I just wanted to share it with you. I, I thought it was interesting. It's still very interesting today. And who knows, uh, Steve may have found this fourth dimension. I don't know. We'll see you. Bye-bye.